Hey guys, this is Cholera SC with Moltrap here for Group D of the uh, OSL Round 16 Day 5. This is Stork vs. C. We've been playing a little bit of uh, music commentators here. Um, <laughs> a lot of people switching in and off, but uh, hope you guys enjoy all of us, uh, as I'm sure many of you do, um, switching in and off. And uh, here we have Stork, who is 2-0 in this group, versus C, who is 1-1. The other two players are Fantasy, who is 1-1, and Backo, who is 0-2. Um, how do you think these two players are going to do, and do you think Stork's going to continue his uh, sort of, uh, I guess, comeback, a little bit of a mini comeback here, and, and just excellent play overall uh, in this series. Yeah, Stork has been uh, playing ridiculously well lately. Uh, he's, he's, I mean, he's on a real streak right now. In fact, out of his last, I looked it up, as of his last 18 games, he has won 15 of them, uh, with only a, one loss to Bisu, and he went 0-2 against Jadong in the World Saber Games Korea Finals, but uh, still, in general, playing extremely well uh, against everyone except Jadong, um, <laughs> who I believe beat him in, in the uh, GOM TV as well not that long ago. Uh, so I'm definitely favoring Stork to to win this match. C has been playing. Uh, he's been playing okay. I mean, but you know, he's C. He's the the guy that plays really solid uh, and gets into the early re uh, rounds of Star Leagues and then kind of um, uh, peters out, um, in my opinion, due to lack of. Um, uh, I guess we'd call heart or enthusiasm. He always, he never really looks like he's, he really wants that win. He, he never really plays like it either. And so, you know, when he encounters players that really, really want that win, um, they, they somehow manage to pull it off and, or he chokes and, um, and uh, ends up getting out <laughs> before getting too far in the Star League. So uh, we will see, though. I mean, it's only the round of 16, so uh, it's not choke time just yet. Uh, C usually gets to the round of 8 before completely choking, so... It's anyone's game, I guess. Oh, wow. That's hard. But uh, I, I do agree with you pretty much on all accounts, as, as uh, you just said there. Um, interesting enough, C actually is going to block his choke. He really doesn't want uh, Stork to scout him and get that probe in, which is probably going to stay in there for quite a long time. So we could be seeing a, a fast rush here, possibly, from um, C. Or maybe he just uh, wants to just deny information from Stork, of course. That was the simpler explanation. Um, Stork, like you said, has been absolutely on a tear recently, and I am going to put him as a favorite to win here. By the way, this map is uh, uh, Chipung Ryong, uh, the Autumn Wind Domain, uh, great name I think, um, better than Chupung Ryong uh, <laughs> when you translate it. Um, Stork actually sending forward two probes, interesting. Uh, maybe he's going to just battle for that ramp, maybe he suspects that uh, C is going to block it. And interesting enough, what do you think he's doing with these two probes? Mm, I'm not sure, he, one's going kind of off to the side, it could be a proxy. Uh, we're going to see in just a moment if he plans down a proxy or if he's going to bring in a, a double team probe attack to get a scout in. Uh, I don't think that would make too much sense because then the probe's just going to get picked off by a marine anyway. Oh, and the probe gets by! <laughs> That's it. That may have been intentional oh. by C. I think C really wanted to send out a scout of his own and just said, screw it. Um, but um, C does, ma and he's got a really good setup in his base. There's the proxy pylon. Proxy right. pylon for Stork. So now, I think part of the reason why I sent two probes is A, to get that scout in, and B, so that C doesn't even suspect that this is going on. Oftentimes the probe scout is delayed if there's a proxy. Um, and so maybe point. C won't expect it. I'm, I'm not sure it will work out too well for Stork, though, because C has a really good uh, base setup right now. He's got really good spots. He's already got his factory going. Um, he can move his Marines in between that uh, um, supply depot and barracks and, and deal with any... Um, well, you know what? I was going to say deal with any Zealots, but obviously it's too late for that. He may be setting up for a proxy robo or something like that, uh, some early reverse. Uh, something of that sort. So I think that would be a pretty good strategy to go. It's going to be up to C. C doesn't have a good history of dealing well with that kind of thing, so um, I think it'll turn Absolutely. out well for Stork. Yeah, C definitely likes the standard games, and Stork is not going to give him a standard game here. Um, C looks like he's actually going for a fast expand there, based on the number of uh, SCVs on gas, and this is going to be disastrous for him, I feel. But no, C actually! Oh my god, this is absolute map hack scouting! Whoa, did C see it? No, C did not see it! Oh man, I was going to say that was map hack <laughs> scouting! Oh no! Moltrap, do you think he saw that? Uh, do you think he saw it and just faked his exit, or, or what? Just to like, I'm prevent him sure from knowing? Yeah, I, I, I don't I, think he saw it. Wait, let's see. No, oh, they're showing first person. First person. It's not on his minimap. It's not on his minimap. Oh, he did man. not it see it. Like I think he would have good try, sent the SCV over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was so close. 
And this is going to be absolutely terrible for him, I think. He's actually researching mines, which um, is good for DTs, really not that great for Reavers. And uh, I have to say, this is this is going looks like it's going to be Stork's game here with any amount of uh, good micro, and I know Stork is fully capable of Reaver micro. Yeah, Stork has pretty ridiculous Reaver micro. Um, yeah, he's he's in a really, really strong position here. Uh, usually if you spot that um, proxy, you'll see the SCV go over directly to the pylon and t take a good long look at it. So that's why I kind of thought that he hadn't seen it. But <laughs> Sh Shovel is out already. It looks like he might even be uh, not even waiting for the Reaver. He's Or no, maybe he's just picking up the uh, Zealots in preparation for the Reaver. But uh, that was a close one. The SCV almost saw that shuttle uh, oh. flying around, but it SCV didn't. So still... The ramp. <laughs> oh, SCV is oh. in there. He's going to realize something is up, but I think it might be too late. Yeah, I think it is going to be too late. It looks like uh, C actually taking this chance to... He, he went for the FD turn build, but he's now pushing out with the Reavers. Uh, uh, sorry, the four, uh, five Marines and the tank, but the Reavers going to be coming out really soon. And uh, whether C decides to use the Reaver to defend or to attack, it's going to work very well no matter what. And uh, there's absolutely nothing inside of C's base. This is absolutely terrible. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, Stork can defend with his forces coming out of his gateways against a tiny push there. Stork dropping the Zealot first to absorb the mine hit, and uh, nice, one hit already from the Reaver. Uh, two two SCVs down, looks like he's going to get a third one right now, and there's just absolutely nothing that he's going to be able to do about it. Uh, these mines are just not that effective, and here comes the Marines coming back. The Marines <laughs> get wiped out by the Reaver, and there goes the tank. Look, oh man, did you see Stork's face? Oh my know, I'm sorry, C's face. C, C knows it's over, I think, and this is going to be GG very soon. Oh man, this is this is basically GG. Uh, you 16 saw sixteen kills. So oh, nice. God. Sixteen. Sixteen kills wow. now on that Sorry. reaver. You saw that C. He had his forces. He was sending out that initial push. He was ex he wasn't expecting this at all. And you could so you saw as soon as he realized what was going on when his SCV got on there, he turned his forces around. But it was too late. Uh, Stork already had good position in his base, and then just coming up that ramp. His forces got slaughtered. Two scarabs took out his entire FD push, and uh, now it's just a matter of time. It, it's just, Stork's just going to be able to pick him off. Stork has some of the best Reaver Shuttle Micro in the game, and I don't <laughs> think there's anything that, is, that C can do about it anymore. Yeah, I mean, basically setting up a clinic right now, and all it costs you is uh, your birth in the OSL round of eight to, to take this clinic in uh, <laughs> Reaver Harass. <laughs> He's just going to set up a clinic, and this is, you know, it, he's just going to basically just wipe C off the map here. There's nothing C can do. He's probably going to stay in for a little bit longer, just because uh, it is... Uh, well, he, he doesn't necessarily lose if he loses this game now. Um, Stork will definitely advance uh, if he loses. Uh, Stork will be 3-0, in fact, so that'd be quite impressive. Um, but C can hope that Fantasy loses to Backhoe, that ba Backhoe beats uh, Fantasy, in which case it'll be a three-way uh, runoff uh, for the second lever. And he, there's GG from C. Uh, the Wraith coming out, but obviously it was not too little too late at that point. So um, Stork once again playing really beautifully, and he looks like a serious, serious contender to win uh, the second OS. No, no, I'm sorry, his first OSL title ever, or his first major title ever. Yeah, Stork is uh, he's uh, some people call him the new king of second place. He's he keeps getting very, very high up in competitions. He's always a really strong player and a really strong contender, but he just hasn't managed to take one yet. Um, I, I personally, I'm rooting for him. I think this might be his OSL. He's playing really well right now, and uh, you know, he's some of his competition might be uh, uh, eliminated from their other groups before being a, a true danger to him. And now he's 3 0 his group, so definitely looking strong going into the round of eight here. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think Stork's main competition, obviously, flashes up there. Uh, July, if he manages to leave the group, will be a competition. But Jadong, Stork's, one of Stork's nemesis, uh, like we said before, is not in the OSL anymore. Um, so really, he's going to be facing uh, Best, of course. Uh, certainly is another big test for him, and Best most likely will be leaving his group. But Stork, seriously, uh, you know, is looking very, very good. Um, you guys should check out the game uh, that we casted between Stork and Backhoe, if you don't believe me, uh, for a much closer game where Stork, um, you know, he does wipe the floor with backhoe but uh, it took him quite a while to get to it and uh, it was he was behind most of the games um, but uh, basically this group we're going to see one more game it's going to be uh, light versus uh, no. I'm sorry it's going to be fantasy versus uh, backhoe and uh, that will determine whether fantasy advances or whether there's a three-way runoff um, Moltrap who would you favor among fantasy backhoe and C to win a three-way in this group? Um, uh, if it got to a, a three-way tie, I would favor C to make it out of that group. Um, 
you know, like I uh, like I said before, he can choke, but he's still a really really solid player. And um, you know, just backhoe has just been playing like crap. And fantasy is he looks pretty good. He looks pretty good, but he's not quite. I think I think next OSL, the next season, he's going to be a, a true contender. But he still needs a little bit more experience to really um, play with the big boys, even though he's accomplished quite a lot uh, recently. Yeah, I have to agree. And with the uh, OSL rounding down here, winding down here, I'm glad to see none of the six games are going to not count. Sometimes that does happen in the OSL where um, the six game doesn't count, but uh, all of them are certainly going to be very important to see uh, which groups end up in tiebreakers and which don't. Um, so hope you guys have enjoyed our commentary so far. Uh, we're certainly going to be bringing you more of the OSL and the MSL in the future, and uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. And, oh yeah, check out the Child's Play charity. Uh, Moltrap, do you want to talk a little bit about that uh, right now? Because I know you know more than, about that than I do. Oh, um, Diggity's the one that, he, well, Diggity's basically organizing it um, himself. He's, he's working with a lot of different uh, sites and groups on that, but uh, essentially it's going to be a, a tournament. I'm, I don't know if there's a buy-in or not um, but essentially he's gonna I think there's oh yeah I think there's donations yeah there's gonna he's gonna have a donation uh, system for it and anyone that wants to contribute can contribute it's gonna be a crazy tournament with different UMS maps and fastest and big game hunters and all this stuff and um, yeah basically the top two donators are gonna be able to play a team melee against JF as their prize and you wow. know it's all pretty silly but the point of it is just to have fun and create some fun games to watch and I, I believe we're going to do commentary on some of them and all the proceeds are going to go to well I, I think all of them are going to go to um, the Child's Play charity which is a charity that gives video games to um, children that are needy over the holidays that sort of thing when I say I'm not sure if it's gonna be all the proceeds I don't know if we're gonna to have to pay for a web space or anything like that but Diggity and as far as I know any of the groups that we're working with are not gonna be taking any of the money at all as far as I know it's all gonna to go to the charity yeah absolutely and uh, you guys should check out Diggity's um, profile for a video that he made about the Child's Play thing I, I might put it up on mine too this is Collar of course um, yeah but thank you guys for watching do check out the Child's Play charity and join if you can uh, I think I might actually play in it um, <laughs> so you might have a chance to play a commentator uh, it certainly is a great cause and uh, yeah I mean video games over Christmas that's just um, something that is that I think everybody who's a gamer would understand is, is a great cause. So uh, thank you guys for watching, by the way. And uh, this is Cholera signing off.